Hello everybody, I just wanted to do a quick little bit about this topic that I'm just now familiarizing myself with, well since last night. So basically, um, the author, Salmon Rushdie, I think is how you say his name, um, he was attacked last night, or yesterday, um, he was giving, um, a lecture on free speech in upstate New York, or west New York, I don't know, um, Chautauqua, I think, and a dude ran up on stage and started stabbing him in the throat and shit, like, I, I was tripped out, and then I was, like, looking at my little mug right here, and I'm like, oh, shit, yeah, my banned book mug, Satanic Verses, holy shit. And I've never read the Satanic Verses, don't know much about it. <clears throat> but um, this all happened around my childhood. And for some reason, I don't really remember it a whole lot. I remember the title. So I'm sure I saw it like being talked about on the news and stuff. For those of you who don't know about me, um, in the, in the house I grew up in, at 6 o'clock, the news came on. And that was what we were doing. And then at 7 o'clock, Entertainment Tonight came on. And then um, at 7.30, there was another show that would be like Entertainment Tonight, but not Entertainment Tonight. Either sitcom started at 8.00. Or um, 48 Hours with Dan Rather or something like that. And on Sundays, you know, we had 60 Minutes because um, I thought, like, they, they liked it and I thought Andy Rooney was funny. So anyway, this whole thing, like, I just, I'm shocked about all of the things that I don't remember from this. The book came out around 88 or 89 and for those of you who don't know, if this is the first you're hearing about any of this, I, I don't know how you break it up because I don't know enough about Islam, but the Ayatollah Khamenei, I don't know what the word is, it's not a holy war, but it's like, a, he basically sentenced um, Rushdie to death for this book. And it's not like they had him and arrested him and all this other shit. He just said, he should die for saying these horrible things about Muhammad in the Satanic Verses. And then I guess there was like a $3 million bounty on his head. And because of all this shit, he had to like live in hiding for like nine years. He had like, had to have security and all this shit, like security guards. And for those of you who don't know, like Rushdie was like kind of like the biggest deal at the time he won I guess the booker in um 81 um for midnight children he was a big deal and like in the 80s he was a big deal and I guess at the time with the satanic verses that was the biggest advance um a publishing company ever gave to somebody well anyway so a lot of Islamic people, Muslim people, um, started burning the book all over the world. And the book was banned in a bunch of countries and all this shit. And then in the late 90s, whoever was in charge said, you know, it, I guess it was like a thing like, we don't necessarily want him to die, you know, but if he dies, he dies or something. And so the last like 10 or 15 years, Rushdie's kind of felt like everything was cool. Um, I'm sure he was worried here and there, but he thought he was safe. And apparently he wasn't. And since we have been... Th th this is difficult for me because I, I don't know enough about Islamic culture. But because we have been talking about like censorship and banning books and um, defunding libraries and all this shit, that this is definitely part of the conversation. A author who wrote something to spark 
conversation and ideas has been attacked. He is on a ventilator right now. He's not dead. He's not dead. Touch wood. And he might lose an eye was the last I heard. And I, I wanted to wait on this to find out what was fucking happening. But because um, our new cycle in the world is like every 30 seconds now that um, I figured I might as well just jump on it now, do it, and then um, if something comes up, I could talk about it. But this is terrifying shit, dude. God damn it. it it's so bizarre. And you can watch, like, shorts and reels and shit of, like, people taking the footage of the attack and the right after the attack. And it looks like an event that, like, my mom would go to. Like, it looks so posh. I'm sure it's not like this, and this is just the impression I get. But, like, it looks like the people who were in that audience have, like, never even had a fucking toothache. You know, it's like, not that there's anything wrong with that. I just feel like the shock of everything, like, I have a feeling that, like, because when they first started talking to people, they're like, yeah, this guy came up and he started punching him. But um, he wasn't punching him, he was stabbing him. So, um, it's just, it's fucking weird. So anyway, so last night after I heard about this, I went on a deep dive rabbit hole and started watching, um, like, news footage like news stories from when the book actually came out and how pissed off uh, muslims were about it and how um like i watched some stuff from bbc i watched some stuff from channel four i watched some stuff from a news um thing in i think it was toronto canada and then just like interviews with him over the years talking about all of this stuff and what is almost more intriguing to me about 12 years ago 10 no 11 I think it was like 11 years ago he was in an interview talking about writing a memoir about the like how his life changed once the satanic verses came out that I want to read so I was like going through everything and found um, a copy of satanic verses online and I started reading it. Dude, this fucking book, dude, it fucking starts off with a fucking plane exploding over um, London, I guess. And um, two dudes falling to earth. And it is very metaphoric, like everything in it so far. That's how you fucking start a book off, dude. Page one, line one plane goes boom motherfuckers falling that's how you start a fucking book dude i'm going to be reading this book and um i'll tell you a little bit about it as i go so have you read this what do you think of it um let me know down below and um let's fucking wish him well and hope he has a fucking speedy recovery this is fucking ridiculous And the dude who did it, um, he's being praised by a bunch of Iranian newspapers and shit. So, uh, goddamn. See you guys later. I just want to give a quick thanks to those people who make these videos possible. Anarchy Creo and my followers on Patreon, I appreciate the hell out of you guys, and thank you so much for keeping me going to keep this content possible. You guys are awesome. And if you'd like to join the career of the Anarchy Creo, just hit the join button beneath this video. And if you'd like to become a member of my Patreon, you can run over to the link down below to do that as well. Thank you.